Good afternoon again, those people who are listening, us and listening to us and joining our Pi Martins class story. Today, I'm in the Learning Hub, just to make it a bit different. Uh, still reading The Mystery of the Hidden Gold, Chapter 6, Officially Missing. Emily would rather have spent the afternoon chopping firewood with the boys than in Tr Truro with her gathered clan of the Wild family at her great aunt Beryl's 90th birthday party. It was bad enough that she had to wear a dress and leave Drift at home by himself. Even worse, she was stuck at a table with her three cousins and they had only one topic of conversation between them. It wasn't that Emily had anything against horses. They were perfectly nice animals, but after two hours of snaffle, bridles, stable fees and pony club, she was losing the will to live. She couldn't wait to get home and put in some work on the treasure map. She needed to figure out exactly where Maddox's lifeboat had landed on Gull Island and chart a route so they could navigate to the same spot. In her little rowing boat, Gemini, they should be able to pick up a way through the rocks. When at last they got back to the lighthouse, Emily was poleaxed by one, poleaxed by one of Drift's vertical takeoff welcomes. He sprang into her arms and attempted to bark, lick her face and chase his tail all at the same time. Emily picked herself up off the floor and hugged him. I've been gone three hours, not three years, she laughed. Come on, we've got work to do. Together they ran up the spiral staircase to the family living room where Emily had left the map with John Mackey's journal on Dad's desk. At least that's where she thought she'd left it. The journal was still there tucked out of sight behind the computer, but the map had gone. Emily's heart went to a free fall. Think, think, she screamed to herself. Where can it be? She replayed the scene in her mind. She was sitting at the desk. Mum was downstairs, shouting for her to hurry up. We'll be late for Aunt Beryl's party. Rapido. When Mum started speaking Spanish, Emily knew it wasn't time for a calm and rational exchange of opinions, so she quickly stuffed the map and the journal behind the computer and flown down the stairs. But she had definitely left the map on the desk. And it had definitely disappeared. Mum, she yelled, did you move anything of mine from Dad's desk? You think I've got time for tidying your things? Mum shouted up from the kitchen. Where, was she, where she was stampy, stamping around like a flamenco dancer, crashing pots and pans as she started to prepare the evening meal. She and Dad had been conducting a monster row all the way home in the car about some, something someone had said at the party. Dad crept into the living room, clearly looking for somewhere to lie low until hostilities had died down. Mum's temper was just like the storms in the bay, quick to flare up but just as quick to the blow over. Have you seen the map I was looking at? Emily asked. Map? What map? Dad mumbled without looking up from his strumming on his guitar. Where is it? Emily felt as if she was going to be sucked down a giant plug hole. Why, oh why didn't I copy the map into my notebook? Why didn't I take it upstairs and lock it in my evidence safe? Furious with herself, she began yanking open drawers and slamming them shut, snatching up piles of paper and banging them down again and crawling around on the floor to look under the furniture. Drift joined in enthusiastically, grabbing objects in his drawer, shaking them and tossing them aside. Uh, have you lost a lottery ticket or something? Dad asked. Emily shook her head. This was much, much worse than losing a lottery ticket. How am I going to tell Scott and Jack I've lost the map? The thought chased itself round and round Emily's head all night. She was the one who had always going on about organisation and planning being vital for a successful investigation. At one point, her overwrought brain hatched the brilliant idea of recreating a copy of the map from memory and passing it off as the original. The boys would never know if she scuffed it up a bit to make it look old. Well... It seemed like a brilliant idea for about five seconds until she realised that she couldn't remember the details of the coastline or half the codes, coded clues. F674, what came next? The letters and numbers kept jumbling together like the alphabet spaghetti in her head. Why had her memory picked this moment to let her down? 
Yeah, right, Scott grinned at Jack across the breakfast table next morning and pointed at his mobile phone. Em says she's lost the treasure map. As if, Jack snorted into his orange juice. Knowing Emily, it's locked in some high-security vault with fingerprint readers and eyeball scanners on the door. But Scott's grin suddenly faded. I think she's serious. He held the phone out for Jack to hear. Was that Emily crying? No way, Emily didn't do crying. The only time Jack had ever seen her in tears before was when she dropped a priceless Saxon sword in the sea and thought it was lost forever, which was fair enough. He'd probably have a, a bit of a sniffle himself under those circumstances. Within minutes, the boys were racing to help Emily search. They scoured every inch of the lighthouse, but it was no good. Their treasure map was officially missing. Join us again for chapter 7, where there is motive and opportunity. <laughs>